What if I told you you attract people into your life? What if you co-created the events in your life that brought you pain? What if that which brings us pain is actually here to serve us? And what if reality as you know it is not what it seems? Here's an idea. Life is a mere interpretation and a matter of perspective, bounded by our beliefs and perceptions. When we string our interpretations together, we create a story. And the grouping of these stories over time develops into the story of our life. Human beings have been telling stories for thousands of years. How do we know if these stories we tell are true? For one event with 100 people, there are 100 different experiences of that one event. What is the truth of the event? Is there one? Today, I'm going to share with you my greatest teacher in life and one of the most impactful barriers that I've had to face. Since we are all from different walks of life, I want to invite you to apply your barrier to the messages and stories that I'm going to speak on. I can still remember my first dance class. I was in junior high and I was at an all girls school. Dance club was the name of the class, where a hundred plus different kids were put into a room to learn ballroom dances. We were randomly partnered and not only was I introduced to a boy I had never met, which at the time I had little to no experience with the opposite sex because I went to an all-girls school, I was introduced to a boy who had never met a girl with one arm. You see, when I was born missing my right arm, the doctors told my mom she is only as handicapped as you make her. And growing up, there was nothing I was told I could not do, nor was there anything, and I mean anything, that I was allowed to play the one arm card for. If I tried to, my mom would respond, faith, it is a fact, not an excuse. When I was partnered in those dancing classes, I was rejected over and over again. Can you imagine being 13 in your awkward years and you're having to learn how to dance, relate to boys, and handle their reaction to you missing a limb? It's a lot. When we label someone as different, when we other someone, we dehumanize them. And when we pity someone, we take away their dignity. These experiences can create wounding or trauma Trauma is not only what happens to us, but it's what happens inside of us. The trauma that happened inside of me at dance club changed me, although I did not know it at the time. And just a few months ago, I had a session over Zoom with a Kundalini yoga coach, which is um, a breathwork practitioner. And she requested that we open our session with ecstatic dance. Now I'm at my house alone. No one's here with me or at the time. And when Jenna made the request, I paused, frozen, and I asked her, can we please not do this? And Jenna said to me, Faith, do you trust me? I will be dancing with you. So she turned up the music and I attempted to dance. And the degree of my discomfort in doing so absolutely paralyzed me. Barely dancing, I felt a huge surge of anxiety and pain. And I started to cry. My heart broke at realizing how uncomfortable I was in my own skin, in my own home, alone. So comfortable that I couldn't dance. So uncomfortable that I could not dance. I asked myself, when did I stop dancing? And then I remembered dance club. If you have read The Body Keep Score, you will know that trauma is stored in the body in our tissues and in our cells without us even realizing. Because of my experiences in dance club and the stories I created from them, an identity emerged that I am someone who does not dance. For the next decade, 
I played this identity in every dancing scenario that I found myself in. People, people would say, Faith, come on, dance. And I would say, oh, it's fine, guys. I'm just somebody who doesn't dance. I'm just not my thing. I'm just not a dancer. And I didn't realize at the time that I was doing this to protect myself, to ensure that I would not feel othered, alien, or rejected the way I felt as a little girl during dance club. Being viewed as different in countless instances, feeling dehumanized and pitied throughout my life made me feel alone. I believed that I was unworthy of connection, community, and love. But I also felt this way because of the story that I was creating based on my own interpretation of my experiences. Having clarity on what are facts in life and what are stories is essential to shifting out of the role of victim and into the role of creator. In the victim state or the victim role, life happens to us. We believe our suffering is from external circumstances and we blame things outside of ourselves for why our life is the way that it, it is for why we are the way we are. But in the creator state, life happens for us. When a challenge comes, we interpret the challenge as preparation for the future, something that is even greater than what is now. Were some boys rejecting me because I have one arm? Sure. But could it also be that their experience of meeting me, which I interpreted as rejection, was just them being a deer seeing headlights and they simply did not know what to do. Their shock and fear of upsetting me is what caused them to freeze and avoid me. Could they have been having just as an uncomfortable experience as I was? As humans, we are wired to create and find meaning in life. When we experience adversity, we make a story about how the adversity or the barrier impacts us and what it means about who we are and what we are worthy of. These stories that we use to create meaning, that we use to reason with ourselves for why things happen to us, they are the barriers that we place against ourselves. That is, if we believe something that is empowering or disempowering. Because when we, when we believe something, the brain subconsciously looks for evidence that proves our belief to be true. At the base of our brainstem, there is something called the reticular activating system. And it's basically a bundle of nerves that filters out unnecessary information so the important stuff gets through. The important stuff is your beliefs. And this is all done without your awareness. Do you know what you believe? And most importantly, do you believe you are a victim to life or do you believe you are a creator of it? We can perceive our barriers as challenges that weaken and defeat us or challenges that strengthen and transform us. For most of my life, I did not know that my painful experience changed how I viewed myself. I did not realize that my self-esteem and my confidence was impacted or how much I did not feel worthy of confidence because I have one arm. I did not know I subconsciously gave my power away to something I could not even control which of course left me feeling utterly powerless in my life because not only did I give my power away, but I gave it away to something that would be impossible for me to change. And when we can't take responsibility for something, we lose the ability to respond. Response ability, the ability to respond. Understanding our barriers, can make it easier for us to break them and to consciously respond. For example, learning about human psychology and what society has been taught to be a normal body, normal body being someone who has 
all of their limbs and can see and can talk and hear. When I understood what this normal body was and how it was taught to people, it allowed me to make sense of people's response to me. It freed me from no longer taking it personally because I realized people aren't bad because they treat me differently. People do what they're conditioned to do and people are conditioned through media, entertainment, their family, and their culture. Our conditioning is not our fault, but our healing, healing our conditioning is our responsibility. What if in order to heal, we have to feel? What if the pain we feel when someone turns us down, the pain we feel as rejection is actually the illumination of where we reject ourselves. And if we reject ourselves, well, you can take responsibility for that. I thought people stared at me because they thought I was weird for having one arm, which is sometimes true. However, when my feelings were hurt because of that, the pain I was feeling was not coming from them. The pain I was feeling was the illumination of my own belief about myself. That part of me deep down believed them. Here's a mind bender. I'm gonna say it really slow because it takes a minute to sink in. What you think others think about you is actually what you think about you. We can blame society all we want for the problems we encounter, but as individuals, we are part of society. We are all cogs in the machine. As someone who is different from the norm, and we all have something that makes us different, that makes us feel like we don't belong, right? You have the power to be an ambassador for the change you wish to see in the world, for how you wish society to view what makes you different. You can rewrite the script by showing up in a way that opposes society's expectations. To change the world, you must embody and be that change in all that you do. In my experience, life will continue to bring people and circumstances into our lives to reveal where we are not free so we can actualize our greatest potential. Playing the victim is the biggest barrier of all because it makes you powerless. It strips you of any and all tools to climb the mountain in front of you. Now, when someone stares at me, I lean into it. I see it as an opportunity to deepen my practice of showing up for myself. Can I hold myself in these vulnerable moments? Can I look that person in the eyes and smile? Because they're on their journey and they're doing the best they can with the awareness that they have. Again, back to conditioning. Can I master my own emotions and not take people's response to me personally? Can I stay sovereign in my own state of being and not waver in my energy? Rejection is an opportunity for self-love. When I believed that I would be rejected for having one arm, I attracted people and circumstances into my life where that was true. I brought those experiences to myself because I was subconsciously looking for them. I was looking for an external event to prove my subconscious internal story. When I started identifying the stories that I told me about myself, which were not always nice, <laughs> I was able to flip the script. I started paying attention to all the opportunities and people that showed me that I am loved and worthy. Your energy is your currency. And what you pay attention to is what you invest in. What you invest in is what grows in your life. When I realized these stories, I started investing in myself. Loving yourself is investing in yourself. Now, when, I, when people say, and even when I say love yourself, 
I sometimes want to cringe because what does that even mean? Love yourself. We see it all the time, right? Loving yourself means taking care of yourself. It isn't giving yourself whatever you want. It is doing things that's in your own best interest. It's feeding yourself nutritious food, keeping your living space clean, providing for yourself, telling yourself stories that are empowering and not disabling. It's accepting and embracing yourself. It's caring for how you feel, for your state of being. That means keeping boundaries and not running your energy to E. And most importantly, trusting yourself, being your word to yourself and then to others. So what I started showing up, when I started showing up for myself and taking responsibility for my energy, for how I show up, for how I feel, I was able to shift my reality. The love we all so desperately search is already within us. Many stories and parables are useful, but many of the stories we tell ourselves create barriers that block us from the exquisite life we deserve and we are worthy of. Now, as the creator of my story, I see these painful experiences that I've had in the past as stepping stones in my own journey. And the painful experiences that you have had are the same. You can view th those painful experiences as the, as the juice to transform yourself, as the gifts to bring light into the world. They're keys for unlocking your limiting beliefs because the lesson will continue to show up until you learn it. When you rewrite the stories you tell yourself about yourself, about the world, and you believe in your inherent worth and goodness, you allow the magic of life to come into your life, come into your heart. And with a little luck and a lot of love and some faith, you can begin to dance again. Thank you.